Hey, up! Right, the uh, European Union's at it again. This time, the banning chrome. Hexavalent chrome, to be exact. That's the chrome that we generally see on just about every product that's chrome-plated. And I can see the comments in the comments section already. Great, I don't like chrome. It's difficult to look after. It's a pain in the ass. I like my motorcycle blacked out. Good riddance to chrome. I don't like it. Yeah, I mean, I, I've had that for years when we've been looking at the uh, chrome motorcycles that I own and how to look after chrome, which isn't difficult. It's more durable than paint, especially if it's matte paint. It's longer lasting and it's low maintenance, which is why it's so popular worldwide. We have chrome plated products all around the house, especially in the kitchen and the bathroom, because Without it, your taps would soon become a rotten, manky mess. High quality taps are generally made from brass, and brass is very durable, but it does oxidise when it's exposed to air and water, which means it becomes pitted, and then it harbours all sorts of nasty bacteria and moulds, which are potentially dangerous to human health. So, chrome provides a nice, smooth, resilient, easy to clean surface that stops that from happening and without it you'd have to be constantly polishing your taps or you'd have to replace them every year and we know how expensive that would get now i didn't know about this but back in 2017 the uh, european union put all manufacturers on notice that chrome was going to be banned in seven years time and that deadline is reached this year in 2024 so this week, numerous news articles have been released through various publications telling us about these changes. I'll leave a link to a couple of those in the video description down below, but if you've read one, you've read them all, because they're all virtually word for word exactly the same. No doubt the product of a European Union press release without any uh, opportunity for journalists to cross-examine them. This ban is going to have far-reaching consequences for everyone. Because not only will you not be able to produce any chrome-plated products in the European Union, you won't be able to import or sell any either. Which means manufacturers further afield, like India or well anywhere else in Asia, will have a choice. They either stop using chrome and replace it with something else, or they stop exporting to the European Union. The European Union, though, has a population of round about 450 million people, give or take a million or two. That is 450 million consumers who buy things. That's a market that a lot of manufacturers can't afford to ignore. It's not economically viable to make one set of products to fit EU regulations and then a different set of products for the rest of the world. So what tends to happen is everything is tailored to the EU market, like emission standards. Because it's not worth the hassle and expense of building different products for different sort of geographical areas. So if you make it to fit EU regulations, it's good enough for anywhere else. Now, this ban on Chrome isn't with us yet. Um, they're pushing the bill through, as they put it, this year. So it should be banned by the end of this year, 2024 which means manufacturers worldwide are going to have to start looking at alternatives to chrome and really there aren't any now there is a plating process called trivalent chrome but um it doesn't look as nice it's not quite as durable and it's a lot more expensive to um actually implement and of course there is uh, chrome paint which from a distance looks similar to chrome it doesn't have the same protective capabilities it's just pain so yeah that's not really going to work but the problem for automotive use is actually much more severe than you might think now the first part of this press release and like i've said it's pretty much the same whichever article you read sort of paints chrome has been an overindulgent luxury that we don't need it's just a finish that rich people used to show off their wealth on the motor vehicles, especially the cars. But chrome is so much more than just a decorative finish, and I'll get on to why that is, and why this is so serious, a little bit later on in the video. 
First of all, I suppose we ought to discuss why they're banning it. As usual with the European Union, their justification for this is the environmental damage and the damage to human health that chrome plating causes. And yes, there are some very nasty chemicals used in chrome plating and it also gives off fumes which get into the atmosphere which again are very nasty and then there's the problem with cleanup after the um, actual process itself what to do with the spent chemicals how they should be properly recycled or disposed of but hang on a minute legislation especially in europe and the united states was put in place to cater for all this about 30 years ago as you know, I was involved in vehicle restoration back in the 90s and the early 2000s. Occasionally, I would have to take parts to one of the local chrome plating businesses to have them refinished. And I remember well how the price of chrome plating went up because all these businesses had to install special extraction and capture systems in order to prevent fumes from escaping into the atmosphere they had to enlist the services of very expensive recycling companies to take away the used chemicals and deal with them safely and i think it's safe to say that since then all the rules and regulations regarding the hazards and safety of these processes have been bolstered even further so in theory chromium plating is going to have a negligible effect on the health of the operators that are actually taking part in the process and to the environment so what's the problem well the problem is it became so prohibitively expensive for these sort of businesses to run that all chrome plating was eventually moved to asia where environmental and health protection is less of a concern so really this isn't about the health of operators and the environment here in Europe this is about policing the rest of the world because you know that's what the European Union's all about isn't it now there's one statement in every single one of these articles that says um, chrome plating creates 500 times more atmospheric pollution than a standard diesel engine because, as we all know, even though governments pushed us to adopt these engines back in the 1990s, actually, it's the devil's work. It's an evil piece of machinery. So, if chrome plating is 500 times worse than a diesel engine, yeah, of course we've got to ban it. But hang on a minute, how do you quantify that? How have they come to that conclusion? Well, actually, I've got absolutely no idea. I spent about an hour this morning trying to find the research that had produced these results, and I can't find anything. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. What I'm saying is it's not easy to find. Now, first of all, what is a standard diesel engine? Is it a bus engine from 1980, or is it a modern, small-capacity diesel engine with all the necessary environmental control systems on it because there's going to be a huge difference in emissions from the two and what chrome plating process are we talking about is this some state-of-the-art small business here in the uk with all the necessary environmental controls extraction and capture systems in place just re-chrome plating mascot from a 1950s Rolls Royce or are we comparing it with a, a huge factory turning out thousands of exhaust systems a day somewhere in Asia now depending which way you look at it if it's the former yes there may be cause for concern but if it's the latter well of course it's going to be emitting more environmental pollution because it's a huge manufacturing facility and those sort of volumes are not uncommon. Royal Enfield alone sells about 80,000 motorcycles per month, most of which have chrome plated exhausts and wheels. So there are going to be thousands of parts coming out of those factories every single day. So if they're only producing 500 times more pollution than a single diesel engine, I would say that is a pretty good result. It's a good trade off. But the truth is, we don't know the truth because, you know, the parameters of that claim 
have not been disclosed. It's the usual you drop a press bomb and then run away as fast as you can so no one can ask you any questions scenario. We don't need to know the facts, we just have to accept their truth. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, Jet Laus, your annual global risk report makes for a stunning and sobering read. For the global business community, the top concern for the next two years is not conflict or climate. It is disinformation and misinformation, followed closely by polarization within our societies. These risks are serious because they limit our ability to tackle the big global challenges we are facing. Changes in our climate and our geopolitical climate, shifts in our demography and in our technology, spiraling regional conflicts and intensified geopolitical competition and their impacts on supply chains. The sobering reality is that we are once again competing more intensely across countries than we have in several decades. Now, I suppose if you had a sick conspiracy theorist psychology a bit like man, you could construe just from that one little speech alone that our truth is the only truth, anything else is misinformation and disinformation, and we're having a bit of trouble at the moment through competition from other countries. So perhaps banning them from making cheap, durable motorcycles and cars, as well as a multitude of other products, by outlawing chrome plating, we can, uh, you know, level the playing field up a little bit. I don't know. What do you think? Now, there are some alternatives to chrome that, you know, can be adopted on motorcycles and a lot of other products. Things like stainless steel. A lot of people prefer stainless steel because when it's nicely polished up, it has the, well, more or less the appearance of chrome, but it's much more durable. The problem is people tend not to use it because it's also a lot more expensive. And, of course, if there's suddenly a bigger demand for stainless steel to replace chrome, it's going to become even more expensive, which will push the cost of products up for Asian companies, thereby losing a lot of the financial advantages that they currently have. Or, where possible, they can just take the whole sort of chrome thing out of the equation altogether and just paint everything. Um, well, we used to do that back in the 1930s and 1940s. Painted wheel rims, for example. The problem with painted wheel rims is you're lucky if you don't scratch them when you put the first set of tyres on, but certainly after two or three tyre changes, they're going to be scratched to buggery, which means the lifespan is then greatly reduced. Because those scratches are going to instigate the early onset of destructive corrosion. Now, we can make wheel rims from stainless steel, no problem. We can make a lot of components from stainless steel, including handlebars. It's going to be much more resistant to corrosion than chrome ever was. It'll almost last forever. But it is going to considerably push up the price of any motor vehicle or any product, for that matter, that formerly could be dealt with by the use of chrome. But, as I said earlier on, Chrome isn't merely decorative. It's decorative in some uses, but hexavalent chrome is also very important. In fact, it's the only way that you can produce what's known as hard chrome. Hard chrome is a process that's used to protect some mechanical components from wear. On a motorcycle, this will be things like your fork stanchions and some components in the rear suspension unit. Also, you've got things like bearings, components in the wheels, the steering, and of course the engine that need the capabilities to reduce friction but provide high wear resistance. And that's where hard chrome comes in. And components, like I say, on your fork stanchions and on the 
damper rods in shock absorbers, both on cars and motorcycles, need a high level of corrosion resistance. And hard chroming has all of these properties. And it's not going to be exempt from this ban, unless it's on a component made for the aerospace industry. Because, of course, all these politicians still need their private jets and they still need to be able to get to Davos and cut whatever number it is every year so that they can campaign to save the planet. Now, unfortunately, stainless steel uh, quite simply doesn't have the required wear resistance for these components. Even appropriately tempered 440 grade stainless steel falls well short of the hardness required. Now, perhaps the European Union has factored in the use of things like stainless steel and they're just prepared to put up with a higher wear and failure rate compared to what we're currently using at a higher cost. In mind um, their recent desire to stop the repair of older vehicles that would fit in very nicely with their plans. Vehicles would be much more expensive but they wouldn't last as long as they currently do. The only other possibility that I can think of for these sort of components where uh, a low wear rate is required is perhaps some form of nickel coating or should I say nickel plating which environmentally is much safer until the European Union decides it isn't although I'm not really sure about you know whether that is going to be appropriate for those sort of applications only time will tell one thing is for certain when you read these nonchalant news reports about the um, demise of chrome plating and the fact that it's not really going to make any difference to vehicles don't believe it it is going to have an impact both on your pocket and on the longevity of any future motor vehicles that you buy Right, once again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and my other videos and in doing so helping to support this channel. I really do appreciate it. I'd also appreciate it if you would leave a like and subscribe to this channel if you're not already a subscriber. If you do that, ensure that you hit the notification bell and that your notifications and your channel settings are enabled. That way YouTube will let you know whenever I'm ready to divulge another conspiracy theory. Now, you can help this channel out in other ways, via my Patreon page, or via the super thanks button down below. I really do appreciate that kind of help. It he helps me keep this channel going. I am, of course, going to be back next week, so until then, if you're riding, please ride safely, and I'll see you soon. <laughs>